a businessman came to me at one point, a black country businessman, you know, wouldn't take any nonsense. All right, didn't want you. any of this, uh, didn't want any of this hypnosis stuff. Wanted um, presentation anxiety. He was doing a big uh, presentation to um, a Japanese company, and he wanted a bit of a boost and to get some of the anxiety down so he could clearly present his company's product. And so he wanted NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Um, and as soon as I said, as I was taking him through a process to deal with the anxiety, it's usually helpful to close your eyes. He closed his eyes and went into a trance. Now, I can tell what a trance is as opposed to a, a relaxation state. He went into a trance and he got the rapid eye movement underneath closed lids. And he became someone who was sitting on a swing. And as I asked him, are you inside or outside? Kind of what's going on? Thinking that he'd spontaneously regressed to childhood to get rid of the, the anxiety. Because a lot of people that have presentation anxiety, it began at school when they had to read something out in class, for example. But he was outside. And then he talked about his blonde plaits getting tangled up in the ropes of the swing and when I asked him where he was he started speaking French and he was a little French girl and we had this conversation and I thought that's rather odd um, I had this conversation with him about um, anxiety and about how he was feeling cleared it all up he comes to full conscious awareness, completely unaware that he was a little blonde girl living in France. And quite often I have these conversations with people and then they have no conscious awareness of what happened and they go off on the merry way without their problem anymore. And it's happened so many times, I can only say that's their higher self. That's the soul, if you like. There is a kind of observer element that is witness to all of these different lives. And he needed to go back to a previous life to sort out that stuff that was affecting him in this life. And if you want um, a first-hand example, and the reason why I changed my career so radically, I can tell you about mine. Absolutely, yes, please. Well, uh, it was when I was training to be a, a hypnotist, inadvertently, as I've explained, and none of us knew what we were doing. We really didn't. And this guy um, who was training alongside with me asked me various questions, and I got no idea that I was hypnotised. Um, and if you'd asked me about this stuff beforehand, I would have emphatically denied it so he said to me um what can you see he was absolutely convinced i wasn't in a trance you know he's reading the script he says what can you see and i said skin and he says okay um take me to your home and describe your home what do you see when you go home and i said skin and he said, what are you wearing? Look down at your body, which is kind of a standard procedure in a past life regression script. Look down at your body and what can you see? And I said, skin. And he's going to be uh, bolshy at this time, thinking that I was being deliberately obstructive. He said, uh, go to the place where you sleep. Go to your bed. What do you see? What's your bed made of? And I said, skin. What he didn't yeah, realise... Forming here. Yeah, do you see it, yeah? yeah. Well, what, what he didn't realise when I opened my, my eyes, he thought it hadn't worked and I was just playing a game. And I said, and I was completely overwhelmed, Mark. I was really overwhelmed because the people in a trance don't often say 
a great deal about what's actually going on in their mind. And to me, I was wearing skin because I looked down and I'd got this huge bronze bare chest. I was a man, I must say. So yeah. I got this huge, and I was just completely overwhelmed. Oh my goodness, I, I, all I can see is skin. And it was the way I answered, it was a gruff voice. And I really felt male. And I really didn't want to talk to him. When he said, what can you see? I saw all these animal skins drying in the wind. Um, and I, it's ever such a strange experience, Mark, because you're still you, the present day Jenny, but there was this part of me that was really experiencing, seeing and feeling and sensing these uh, skins being dried in the wind outside. They were all hung up, so that's what I could see. Um, what was my home made of? Well, it was a teepee, so it was skin, you know. Um, where did I sleep? Well, there are all these skins on the floor inside the teepee. As in height? So I was, yeah, yeah. So I was talking completely honestly, but I didn't want to talk to him. I was very reluctant to talk to him. Now, the interesting thing for me personally, and this is what I apply to everybody that I do past life regression with, because it's therapy, that's what I do, I know that whatever it is, whether the mind is constructing something or remembering it or whether it's uh, the soul memory, fantasy, genetic memory, reincarnation, whatever your belief system is, what I would say to someone, it, for the mind to do that, it's got to be useful to the person in the present day. Now, the reason why it was useful to me, Mark, is because... At the time, I'm much better now, but at the time, I had a big thing about being believed. Probably not a good idea to become a hypnotist, I suppose. But I had a big um, hang-up about being believed. I, I really wanted to be perceived as a truthful person. Didn't like lies. Wanted to be believed. And um, in this experience that I had, I was this young Indian brave, big bronze chest, Ooh, very fit guy. And um, I was on my horse, off on my merry way, and I saw some settlers moving into the land and putting flags into the land. And I raced back to my tribe and I said to the elders, you've got to come quickly because men are claiming the land. Men want our land, foreign men. And they said... Don't be silly. Nobody can own the land. The land cannot belong to anyone. And I went off in a huff on my horse. Do, 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 do. And the next thing I remember was looking back at the village and everybody had been slaughtered. Um, and I thought, well, that's got a kind of um, resonance in the present day. Um, and from that point on, everybody that I've treated beginning with my fellow director at that time, I tranced her and she was one of these um, very capable ladies that always wanted to get a screwdriver out and put things together. You know, we went to Ikea to set up the office and nine o'clock at night she wanted to put all the furniture together. And uh, she regressed to being a, a very different voice. She was a Brummie, very, very thick accent. Um, she regressed to being um, a lady in a castle. And it, the reason why you know it's got this truth about it is that they pick up on detail. They don't say, I'm a lady in a castle. You say, what do you see? Big open fireplace, bare bricks, uh, a bed had been turned down, and she wasn't allowed to do anything. She was very restricted. And she said, and I'll always remember how she said it, Father has brought all these suitors. And that isn't a term she would ever use. And I said in my Dudley accent, suitors? What do you mean, suitors? Old, wrinkly men. He said it would be good for the land. So she was being married off at like 14 or 15 yeah. to these guys. 
And she, in this present life, in, at this moment, really was a, a very um, capable, active woman that wanted to do everything for herself. And Jenny? she said, in Jenny? her mind, it was because of uh, of that experience. 